Okay, this is chapter seven, and this is really the beginning of uh, the the rest of the book is is on uh, hypothesis testing. In uh, chapter seven, this is a very important section here because this is the start of hypothesis testing. Um, well, with hypothesis tests, you're you're testing a claim about a population parameter. Like for example, maybe a, a, a claim about the population mean or the population percentage or maybe the population uh, standard deviation or or something of, of that sort. Uh, now there are two hypotheses that show up on when you do hypothesis tests. The first is called the null hypothesis. That's labeled H sub zero. And that's again the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is a statistical hypothesis that contains a statement of equality, such as equals to less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. It will always be one of these three, the null hypothesis. The alternate hypothesis covers the rest of the number line. For example, uh, it's always a statement of inequality. So it's going to be something like not equal to, greater than, or less than. And in fact, these are set up, there's three different types of hypothesis tests. There's a two-tailed test where the null hypothesis is equal to, and the alternate hypothesis is does not equal is not equal to okay so that's called a two-tailed test because uh, it could be uh, you're not looking on any particular direction uh, if the null is equal to and the alternate is not equal to then it could be significantly greater or significantly less whatever you're dealing with okay because if you're saying not equal to it could be greater or less so that's why it's considered a two-tailed test if the null hypothesis is a less than or equal to, the alternate is going to be a greater than. That's called a one-tailed test, and there's uh, this would be a right-tailed test. It's the name of it is based on the alternate hypothesis, so this would be called a right-tailed test. And if the null hypothesis is a greater than or equal to, then the alternate hypothesis would have to be a less than, and this would be called a left-tailed test. Now, all they have to give you in the problem is one of these six, because, for example, if they give you something and, the, and you realize that it's a less than or equal to, then automatically that's a null hypothesis with a less than or equal to, and this automatically goes with it. And I'll just show you something on the Excel sheet that these hypothesis tests are on the 1MU and 1P sheet and other sheets farther up there, but you can see that they're already here labeled, that uh, they're ready to go. You just have to read the problem to know whether you're dealing with means or percentages, and then which one of these three tests you're dealing with. So this would be the two-tailed test setup right here. This is a right-tailed setup, and this would be a, a left-tailed setup. If we go up to the 1P sheet and look at that, here's the two-tailed setup, right-tailed setup, and left-tailed setup. So if you know just one of these, then you know the other, because there's always the, the thing that goes with it, the rest of the number line. It's called its complement. So anyway, the hard thing to do is read the problem and figure out what they're giving you and and then uh, write, you know, write down the null and alternate hypothesis. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, remember, what could be given in the problem could be the null or the alternate. So uh, here we go. It says write the claim about the population, then write its complement, meaning the other one, like if they give you the null, write down the null and the alternate or the alternate and the null. And uh, 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 Write them up. Here we go. It says a hospital claims its average ambulance response time is less than 10 minutes. Bingo, right there. Is less than 10 minutes. That's not less than or equal to, it's less than. So since this is less, that's a statement of inequality, and that's one of those that the uh, alternate hypothesis can be. See, the alternate hypothesis could be not equal to, greater than, or less than. So less than, that's an alternate hypothesis, H sub A. And it's about the means, so we say mu is less than 10. That's the claim. The claim could have been with the null or the alternate. This time the claim was the uh, alternate hypothesis. Now, if this is what the alternate hypothesis is, a less than, then the null hypothesis has to be greater than or equal to. Okay, they go together. This is called a left tail test. If we look on the Excel sheet, we'll see the left tail test right here. See, this is where we would do this problem. But you have to know how to set, read the problem to know where to do it. So that's what this is about here. 
This problem says, a consumer magazine claims that the proportion of cell phone calls made during evening and weekends is at most 60%. At most. Okay, a little tricky there. At most actually means less than or equal to. If you say, I have at most $10 in my pocket, you have at most at. In other words, you could have $10, $9, 8 so on. So at most means that much or less. So this means less than or equal to 60%. Less than or equal to, that's just have it has an equality, you know, equal to with it. So that's a null hypothesis. Looking up here, you can see null hypothesis has less than or equal to or greater than or equal to or just plain old equal to. So this is less than or equal to. Now, if the null is less than or equal to, the alternate is greater than. So that's what the alternate hypothesis is. Again, the thing that gave it away is at most. At most means less than or equal to, so that's a null hypothesis. And it was about percentages, so that's why it's P. So that's why it's P is less than or equal to 60%. That's the null. And the alternate, then, is the opposite of that, or the complement, which is P is greater than 60%. So this would be called a right-tailed test. And we would do this problem on the uh, 1P sheet right here in this area. Now, it doesn't give you enough information to do this, but, but at least this is where you would go to put in your data to do this problem. Now, some are kind of tricky. So here's a just rule of thumb. If, um, if there's wording in the problem that makes the test a right or left tail test, then do the right or left tail test. Like, for example, in real life, you, you come across these. A cons like for example, a consumer magazine claims that the average income in the United States is 35000 That makes you think equal to and not equal to because it says is 35000 It makes you think a two tail test. But if there's anything in the problem that makes you think that if they're implying a left tail or a right tail test, like too high, too low, greater than or less than type of thing, then you do the tail test. And it says, you think that this claim is too low. Well, if you think that this claim here is too low, you must think that the uh, uh, average income is greater than 35,000. Okay, you think that this claim here of 35,000 is too low. So in other words, you think that the average is what? Greater than 35,000. That's a alternate hypothesis. And then the magazine's claim was what? It actually equaled it. So we got the equal to there because it says less than or equal to. But we do have to include the rest of the number line. So that's why we have less than or equal to, not just plain equal to up there. So this would be deal, dealing with a right tail test. Again, the big hint here was this. You think the claim is too low. If you think it's too low, then you must think the average is greater than 35,000. So greater than 35,000 here, and then that automatically makes this a less than or equal to 35,000. This would be a right-tailed test, and you would do this problem on the one mu sheet, right-tailed test right over here in this area. Okay, and on this problem, it says, uh, let's see, uh, a consumer magazine claims that the average income in the United States is at least 35000 Well, at least 35000 means greater than or equal to, and you don't believe this claim, then you must think it's, what, less than 35000 So this would be a left tail test on this, okay? Uh, see, very subtle differences between these. If it has the equals to with it, like this one, at least means greater than or equal to, it's a null hypothesis, making the alternate a left tail test here on this problem. And on this one, since it says you think this uh, the claim is too low, you must think that uh, that it's greater than thirty five thousand, making it a right tail test. So not a lot of difference in the wording, but it's a whole different test. It's a right tail test. This one here is a left tail test. And finally, a straightforward two tail test. Consumer magazine claims that the average income in the United States is thirty five thousand. You don't believe this claim. It doesn't say you think it's higher, you think it's lower, you think it's too low, you think it's too high, or you think it's at least this or at most this. It just says you don't believe that it's 35,000. So the null is mu equals 35,000, and the alternate is mu does not equal 35,000. That's called a two-tail test, and you would do that problem uh, on the one mu sheet right over here where you have the two-tail test. And we'll get into actually doing problems on the next uh, video, but when you do these problems, you'll have rejection regions. And the rejection regions, since it's a two-tail test, like this one here, this last one that we did uh, set up, is a two-tail test, equal to and not equal to. And when it's a two-tail test, you'll have two rejection regions. If it's significantly greater, it's up here, or significantly uh, less than, it's over here. 
And you can change the view of these, uh, re yeah, these, these pictures here by changing the start and end, but these are pretty nice areas that you can see what's going on. When you're doing a right tail test, the rejection region is going to be on the right hand side. See, if I look at this from negative three to three, there's only one rejection region on this. And this is a rejection region just on the left, on the left tail test. So if I even look at it clear out to the end, negative three to three, you can see there's only one rejection region. That's on the left hand side. So the rejection region is on the left hand side on a left tail test. See, this is the left tail test. On the right tail test, it's a rejection region on the right. You would reject the null hypothesis if your if your sample data leads you to a number that's up in this area. And then uh, here on the two-tail test, you would reject the uh, null hypothesis if it's either too high or too low. In other words, your sample data is up here compared to their claim being down here in this area. Everything's switched over to z-scores here on these things or t-scores for small samples, but we'll get into that on the uh, next section.